In the last chapter, we learnt about rotation combined with translation. However, we didn't learn about what happens to a rotating body when different forces act on it. In this chapter, we are going to learn about what happens when different forces are acting on a body which is purely rolling or different forces are acting on a body which make the body purely rolling. Understood? So we will learn about accelerated pure rolling and related concepts in this chapter. We will learn about how a cylinder rolls down an inclined plane, how a pulley with mass behaves and so many other concepts. Rotation 3 Let's proceed. So consider the situation in which a ball that is spinning is allowed to fall on the ground. When that happens, the ball skids on the surface for some time and then it starts rolling on the floor. What exactly happens, you know, when a ball that is rotating is made to fall on the ground? Let us exactly look at what happens at the interface between the lower surface of the ball and the floor as the rotating ball falls on the ground. Initially, the ball is rotating, isn't it? At the instant when it touches the ground, this is the velocity of different parts of the ball. The ball is rotating with an angular velocity omega. So the right side of the ball has a downward speed omega r. The left side of the ball has an upward speed omega r. And the bottommost portion of the ball has a speed towards the left omega r. Now when the ball touches the ground, friction starts acting on this ball. The purpose of friction is to reduce this omega r. After all, friction tries to reduce the relative speed of any two bodies that are in contact. Here friction tries to reduce the value of omega r and bring the lowermost point of this ball to rest. Understood? How does that happen? Friction tends to decrease the value of omega r by decreasing the value of angular velocity. Friction makes sure that a torque acts on the ball, a torque that reduces the value of this angular velocity. So friction tends to decrease omega and decrease the value of omega r using its torque until the point when the net velocity of the bottommost portion of this ball and the floor is zero. Isn't it? Now the interesting thing is that when friction starts acting on this ball towards the right to decrease omega r, it also starts imparting a center of mass velocity to this ball. Isn't it? After all, friction is acting to the right, so it will you know, exert a force on this ball and it will induce a velocity in this ball. Therefore, this is what happens after some time. As you can see, Vcm, the center of mass velocity of the ball, keeps on increasing and omega r, the velocity of the ball because of its angular velocity, keeps on decreasing. Finally, friction increases Vcm to such an extent and it decreases omega r to such an extent that the velocity of the bottommost point of the ball, Vcm minus omega r, becomes zero. Something like this happens. It is at this time when pure rolling starts. And when pure rolling starts, friction stops acting. Understood? After all, the relative velocity between the point of contact of the ball has become zero. So why should friction act? So friction stops acting at, at this instant. Understood? So this is how pure rolling is actually induced in real life. Understood? As you can see, first when the ball comes in contact with the floor, it slides on the floor. Isn't it? It slides on the floor because the relative velocity between the bottommost point of the ball and the floor is not zero. The ball slides on the floor for some time and during this time, friction increases the center of mass velocity of the ball and it decreases omega r in such a way that V becomes equal to omega r. Then friction stops acting, the ball starts pure rolling. Understood? So this is how pure rolling occurs in real life.